All right. Hi guys, welcome back. Oh my god, I hope my mic is recording because I have tried to record in general and it's just failed because the camera doesn't work. So I just hope you know both elements work. So basically, this is gonna be my, I guess, update on my, my TBR or reading log. I don't know why I didn't say that before, but um, I basically only read two things in January. Not a lot in comparison to other people, but <sighs> it's very hard to read in a language that you're not completely familiar in. So I basically read The Scum Villain Self-Saving System, book one, and Il Pomet del Vento e degli Alberi, volume two. Now, <laughs> which should I talk about first? Okay, let's talk about Scum Villain. So I was really hyped to read this. In fact, um, both of the things that I read were basically like rereads, so I sort of knew what was going on already. I just wanted to see how it was like the story was um, being portrayed in like the official releases. So, Scum Villain, very good. Um, wow, that's a short review. Yes, very good. <laughs> because Scum Villain was one of the first series that. I read of the author like back in my day. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it sort of has a special place in my heart. Uh, the unfortunate thing was um, in my past video when I was actually doing first looks into this, um, I dropped it on the floor and there was a wire there, so it created. I don't know if the camera can see this, but it basically just made a dent right there on the spine. I hate it. It's okay. It's, it's, it's not a flaw, it's character. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do I want to address? Oh my god, the series is just so fucking hilarious. This is what I love about this author. She just makes things so funny. Literally, like, in the first few pages. The... <laughs> the character literally says dumb fuck author, dumb fuck novel, and... I don't know. It just kept me going. It just kept me going. Lots of nice, cute, romantic scenes in, um, in the first volume. Very nice. Characters are really engaging. And Shen Yuan as a person. I like how they gave him like a little bit more backstory into who he was so you could understand his perspective on everything. Like in the whole story. Um, instead of him just being like a... I guess just a surrogate for the audience, you know? Like, he's his own character. Wow, the, um, the sad moments though, like in the, what would you even call it? Like, like the arc where Lo Bing He just, you know? Um, nice writing, fantastic writing, definitely just made me feel, definitely made me feel sad. Um, the way Mo Sheng Tong Shu writes, I really like um, some of the her lang the, her use of language and her use of metaphors were like really nice, especially because this is sort of supposed to almost create like this. It's, a, it's sort of like a parody of e the isekai genre. I really like how she includes like cultural references, like pop culture references in the text, like um, songs or like references to like other people in our world and things like that. There were lots of nice quotes here too, and there was lots of um, not lots of, but there's a few hints of like foreshadowing. Like the whole, um, like especially early on when Shen Yuan finds the um, loving his charm, J charm that he dropped. Um, definitely think that's gonna be used in the ending. I mean like why am I saying that? Like I, I know. Like if you know, you know. Like. I'm trying my best not to spoil, but I'm the person that I'm the person that spoils everything. Like after watching a movie in the cinema, I would try and talk about it. Like literally, the latest Spider-Man movie I almost spoiled everyone outside of the cinema. I also like the little nuances they gave to Shen Yuan's character, um, everyone else's character in general, but Shen Yuan's because it's sort of like he love hates you know, proud of mortal demon way. The pacing is quite nice in the sense of it sort of fits like 
the plot progression. I don't know, the macro pacing is nice for now. The macro pacing is nice. Yeah, the cute moments are are really sweet. Um, the system, so fucking unreasonable. If I had to go through the same thing Shan Yuan did, I don't... I... I would also cuss as much as he did. Um, literally even smiling towards the protagonist as a villain is a violation. I, I don't know how you would even tolerate that for the amount of time he did. But yeah, fantastic series, fantastic illustrations by the way, whoever drew this. Sorry, let me get them up. Valency, Valency, yes. Great job, great job. Really compliments the scenes really nicely. I like the atmosphere it brings. Really gives context. Good job. Right, <laughs> for a second one. Oh my god, how am I even gonna say this? The macro pacing, fast. <laughs> Look at how many things happen. Look at how many just. Again, I don't know if you can see this because. I don't have like a little bit like a monitor for me to see but lots of things happen and as you can tell lots of depressing things happen if you can see all of that like uh, violet colored stuff sad and purple stuff things that have made me kind of frustrated <laughs> and just depressed because this is in Italian this took me like dead ass an entire month to finish because i have had to read every single sentence individually but i feel like because of that it's sort of like i'm paying attention i'm paying like lots of attention like to the dialogue and to the text and to the narration and things like that in addition what was i gonna say <laughs> there are lots of sussy moments that happen and i don't mean that in like a funny way i mean that in like I sense imposter. I have read the first volume in November or December and I didn't have that much time to read the second volume because, you know, Christmas and New Year events and stuff like that. So when I actually got to finishing it, it was like fantastic. I feel like um because I did read this and I I forgot some things, but I think there is going to be like a huge, very big, very long arc regarding Agu's backstory, and I think it was um, Serge Stad's backstory. That's going to take up a lot of volumes, and I'm just mentally processing that moment because in halfway through this, um, the volume two, I got extremely invested, so I just binged like a third of it. Um, there weren't a lot of funny moments. Naturally, there's not a lot of funny moments. Um, okay, I don't know where to start with this, so let's start with the start. What's interesting is that Gil actually sort of respects Serge to an extent. I will emphasize to an extent because um, shit goes down. Of course, shit goes down in literally every volume of Kazuriki no Uta, but there are some moments where I forget that Gil isn't the most stable person and sort of lashes out at Surge in a very violent way, often. Which just make me sort of skeptical sometimes to even think like, in the future, like do they actually like each other or like is this just a sort of codependent relationship to sort of get by? Like do you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, there's literally only one cute romantic moment in volume 2, and that is when Serge... That's not even that clear. Is when Serge sort of has an inkling that he likes Gil. Like, or has, I don't know, like, feelings for him or something. And the way it's portrayed is very nice. You know, you see, like, a huge perspective of, like, what he sees. And there's, like, an entire poem written next to it as well. And it was like just very beautiful. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate though, because um a little bit after that, it's the iconic letter scene. I was waiting to read this moment. Cause if you watch the OVA of the series, it was directed so fucking well. And when I read it, I just felt so bad. I'm gonna say that very often. 
I felt so bad. Like that sense of loneliness, that sense of betrayal. Yo, I, yo. It's just depressing. Take a shot for every time I say it's sad or depressing in this video because it's going to be a lot. Like, it just sucks. It literally just sucks. Also, let me address this. What I like about the Italian version is that in comparison to the English scans, I could be wrong because I haven't read the English scans in like a year, there are lots of nuances in what the characters say. For example, they will use the term scappare, meaning like escape. In comparison to if you were to say you leave, they would say you escape. Which is, I think it's like, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Like Italian's a very interesting language. Lots of nice nuance. Like there's like that, like character nuance, you know, in the language. Spanish as well, but I'm reading in Italian. So what was also interesting was I think like in this shot, like Gilbert says something similar to if you want to continue holding my empty shell, go ahead. It's so interesting he uses the term empty shell to describe himself. I don't know. I just think it's like a little, it's like, you know, it adds some flavor to the text. I don't know how to say it. It just, yeah, nuance. And then obviously the whole scene with like Agu coming over to campus and just, you know, just making Gil even more frustrated and starts finding out and then the whole drama happens between them two because they think like, because obviously nothing happened like in the hotel but Gil like assumes that something happened and literally like gets a lit cigarette and like burns through his hand and breaks a bottle and like almost like thrusts it in Serge's neck like holy shit oh my god I had another friend read this and he was also from an, an old boys school he actually said like hmm wow this stuff is kind of accurate and I was a little bit concerned but I don't know <laughs> that's only one person in like one school and yeah near the end we get a little like um bit of August's backstory and that's when I started to feel a bit bad for him obviously like People who abuse others have often been abused themselves, you know? Violence is a vicious cycle, and like, uh, it's up to the person to like be willing to stop it so the cycle stops. Yeah, that's a, that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson that this text teaches you. Also, um, I wanted to say this for the first volume, but Serge really does have a safer complex, doesn't he? Like, I'm not saying that because, like, obviously he's, like, a good guy and he's just trying to help other people, but, like, he almost has that, like, I can fix him mentality that a lot of people say, like, yeah, I can fix him, you know? Or, like, I can, like, yeah. Like, I, the I can fix him mentality is, um, I'm not saying all of it's damaging because, of course, like, you want to support other people and doing other hard times, but, like, if they're not willing, <laughs> to listen and if in the end it's really just hurting you then I think it's completely fine to step away from that but because of Serge and I guess like the fact that he just has a savior complex he's just you know he's just hurting himself along like the way I don't know whether it's the similar situation as to Utena where Utena is just doing like just trying to protect protect I guess protect Amphi for the sake of her own ego I don't know whether it's also for his own ego but um I don't know it could just also be because he doesn't want another person to have like be in the same place as him and just wants him to improve I don't know what if his intentions are very like self-fulfilling or whether they're very selfless but I actually like the fact that when they were arguing in the hotel that he stood up for himself that he was calling out on Gil's bullshit. I can really respect that. And like finally too, uh, Serge the entire time was just being super genuine and was just trying to help him out. While Gil was just almost like, I don't know, gaslighting him. So it's good that like he at least 
at this moment knows his worth um, and just spills the facts. I still think the story, the messages, the meaning does hold up, you know? Obviously there are some moments where modern day audiences would not agree with, like especially for now, like the whole entire like being violent to obviously like people who are helping you and them saying like it's okay it's okay but i feel like the author you know the author keiko she knows what she's doing she knows what she's doing uh is there anything else i want to address yes during one scene when gil and jules are drinking tea and stuff uh jules actually points out the fact that gil is left-handed and i was like important character point again nuance because i remember like back then some people told me that oh some people thought that being left-handed was like a bad thing they thought it was like you being associated with the devil or like you're an evil person or something like that so i think i could be stretching i have absolutely no idea it could just be the case of um you know how society reacts to an individual that's not necessarily the status quo or in this case villainizes them um well and in Gil's case, it's just the fact that he's a broken person, but he just portrays his points and his emotions in a not so healthy manner towards himself and towards other people. Um, yeah, that could just be the case. But I like the fact that they actually put that in and made it consistent because I reread a bit of volume one and two, and like it does seem consistent that he's left handed, so. It's not just an accident or anything, like it was intentional. I like the fact that it wasn't just like, oh, I'm gonna just put it in, you know what I mean? So overall, I think that basically sums up the rest of this month's TBR. I finished them, thank goodness. But this month's February's TBR is just going to be a little bit overwhelming because not only am I going to read volume three of Kazutoki no Uta, I'm going to read volume four of Vinland Saga, as well as Volume 2 of Roll Over and Die. I finished half of Roll Over and Die 2, I just need to finish the rest. Um, and for Vinland Saga, it's just starting from the start of Volume 4. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Of course, do the subscribe, turn on notifications, you know, that type of thing. And yeah, feel free to um, leave a comment whether you agree, disagree. Have a query i guess but i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was entertaining or educational i don't know how it would be educational <laughs> but yeah i'll just see you in the next one bye guys